spectacular Southern California. The surf, sand, and sensational memories of a visit to an unforgettable destination. And an ideal location for some of the best young athletes in North America to unite. The Premier Girls Fast Pitch National Championship in Irvine, California is an unmatched test of skill, teamwork, and perseverance. For nearly a decade, the best softball players in the world have gathered in this beautiful place and battled for the true national championship. The PGF 14U Platinum National Championship is next. It's a spectacular day in Southern California. This is Bill Barber Park in Irvine, one of the great destinations. And these OC Batbusters know it very well. The Northwest Bullets from Portland, Oregon area. This is the PGF 14U Platinum Championship alongside Olympic gold medalist Amanda Freed. My name is Darren Sutton. Welcome back to the ballpark. We're certainly glad to have you with us. When you get to nearly a decade of an event like this, Amanda, there, there's a rich history. And what we've learned about these Platinum Championships is the honor to play the next year in the premier title. And what goes along with these memories makes a day like today, well, an honor for us to be here. I think all week long this has been such an experience for all these athletes participating. And you're right, this is such a great age division, so much competition. There's the ability to go on next year and play. But every year, even at this platinum di division, the competition gets greater and greater. So, I mean, this is a championship any way you look at it. Uh, let's take a look at the starting lineup for these couple of squads. And let's start with the bat buster. She's a slapper. Marissa Rubio is at the top of the order. Hannah Kaur is an Esperanza High School center fielder. Honor roll student, Kaylin Hill. Marla Manalo, soccer, gymnastics, dance when she was younger. Maya Mendoza, Mia Mendoza would love to go to Oregon someday. Lana Mooney, a 4-2-5 student in the classroom. It's Ruiz, it's Stern, it's Martinez. We'll introduce you to all of them as we go on down the line. Dana Butterfield, beautiful northwest part of the United States, Glencoe High School out of Hillsboro, Oregon. She's a 21 grad. Stuff-wise, what will we see in this championship game? Uh, she does a really good job of spinning the ball. She has a nice curve ball and a rise ball, so you'll see her keep the ball up in the zone. Maybe we might expect to see quite a few balls out in the air. Been battling a bit of a hamstring injury, but she's still been throwing very well this tournament. Defensively, behind her working. Sin, ebbs, and fog in the outfield. Jenke with Paul and Keith on the other side of the infield. Mackenzie Abilly, Piper Love is behind the plate. And let's play a championship. We are certainly glad to have you with us. Amanda Free, Darren Sutton, you, and our fine production team as well. Away we go, Dana Butterfield. That's the outside corner with strike one. Marissa Rubio, Silverado High School, this Bat Busters team. This past year in the classroom, welcomed to high school, a 4.0 GPA to get her resume started. And she can flat play. Active in the box, she's a true slapper. Now, and you can see the defense playing to that. The infield's pinched in a little bit. The outfielders are not too far behind the infielders, so playing to keep that ball in front and take away anything small. One ball and two strikes the count on Rubio. Butterfield has been able as she works in the circle to, to play in events in Colorado and then this PGF National. Her mom is Donna, her dad is Chris. She's got an older sister, Taylor, who's committed to Northwestern Nazarene University. Little roller, high bouncing ball. That would have been extra bases. There's the approach. That's what you're talking about. Now we saw last week in the first week of PGF Championships the way that that dirt you know, the ball bounced off of it. We saw a lot of high hopping base hits. These slappers, if they can just bounce that ball right out there in front of home plate, they have good opportunities. This is the week for the 14 and 16 year old talented athletes. With the evolution of the recruiting rules, a lot of eyes, especially on the 14th, without contact from these college coaches, but these 16 U's this September when that arrives, it's going to be an interesting time. So needless to say, as that one is slapped to third, Jenke all across the diamond on a 5-3 ground out. Needless to say, it felt like we were at a college coaches convention all week long. Anna Kaur is the center fielder. Anaheim's Esperanza High School. 
on this beautiful day. The sun just starting to welcome us in the first of four games. 14 and 16 Platinum, 14 and 16 Premier National Championship. Beautiful screwball hits the inside corner. 0-1 the count to Hannah. Infield stays fairly tight in the middle, especially Keith at first base. As a stadium setting, you clearly hear the noise in each dugout, but trust me, whether it be in Fountain Valley or Huntington Beach throughout this week, this is the noise we heard at every single matchup. Game two, three, four, five, six. That's a pretty good screwball, but that's an even better take. Two and one the count. Perfect fence to lean on in this setting. At that bar about mid-height. Rise ball fouled off. Hitters count, not a bad idea to start one in the zone that jumps out of the zone. Yeah, the rise ball can be really effective when you throw it down in the zone and break it up through. To the right side, base hit. As she legs it out, good effort out there. You knew Fogg would take a chance on that backside throw. So Hannah with a pretty piece of hitting, let it travel deep, deep in that stance, and that's the way you start things. That's a good approach off of a pitcher like this. You lay off anything inside and you look for the outside corner, stay patient, see it deep, and drive it opposite field. The catcher and the number three hitter with the number five in her jersey. Slightly open stance for Kaylin Hill. Over the inside corner, there's that patented screwball you were talking about. 0-1 the count. Thoughts of being a teacher someday when you think about what's the aspirations for Hill, the classroom. She'd love to be a teacher of those young. And she's not too far removed from elementary school. She says I'd love to play college softball and then teach. Again, using the big part of the ballpark to the right side. But a nice play by Delaney Keith as she grabs it, steps on the bag for the second. Big second out of the inning. Core moves into scoring position at second. Now, this is a good decision. You could probably field this and easily get that lead out at second. But then you're dealing with a timing issue and the throw across the diamond. Might as well just step on first base for that sure second out. Over the outside corner curveball there. So how do we do this, folks? How do we differentiate? Because my goodness, they look like twin uniforms, don't they? We'll see, keep saying, hey, the team in black is Northwest Bullets. Hey, the team in black is the Bat Busters. We'll do better than that as that one sails high and inside. How about this? Look at Butterfield, who's working in the circle for the Northwest Bullets. Her jersey 33. She's got the smaller number on her jersey, right? And then when you look in the first base dugout, the Bat Busters, they have the larger number on their jersey. Swinging right through it, one and two. Amanda, are you good with that? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could describe piping, right? There's piping on that black jersey. They both have great uniforms. Bullets with no piping. The one, two. Good approach with two strikes. Marley Manalo, Walnut High School. It was Marley we were telling you when we showed you the starting lineup that as she's been younger has achieved on the pitch in soccer, in the gym with gymnastics, and in dance as well. Just that peaceful stance, a really solid base. Gorgeous day in Irvine, California. This venue is just spectacular each and every year. Pitch up, hit up. Deep right center field. Tracking. And that one is hauled in by Taylor Ebbs. You're going up there, I'll go with you. Says Marley Manalo. Gave it a ride, but the ballpark holds it. Both these teams in black. Hope that they can be the bad guy for the opponents today in this championship. Premier Girls fast pitch, 14U Platinum National Championship game. Northwest Bullets 
a team out of the Portland, Oregon area. Taylor Ebbs has so many awards on that mantle. Recently, Oregon's most feared hitter in softball. It, it's Mary Fogg who is at 22. It's Delaney Keith, South Salem High School. Abigail Janke would love to go to Louisville someday. Cam Dacus dreams of Nebraska in her future. It's Haley Paul, Piper Love on further down. In between her, Ava Sin, Mackenzie Abilly. And in the circle for the Batbusters, Anna Yorkland. And Yorkland throws that ball pretty well. She's up there in the high 50s. She'll, she'll hit 60 miles an hour, but she's got a really nice changeup, one of the best on the team, and so great movement as well. Defensively, Rubio, Cor, Mendoza, outfield. Martinez, Mooney, Stern, Ruiz, infield, Hill, and Butterfield work together. They are the battery mates, and away we go with this bottom half. Pretty swing to end things, by the way, by Marley Manalo with that rise ball up, and already good aggressive approach. These pitchers throwing strikes around the zone. There's that screwball to get things started. Down and away to Taylor Epps. Yorkland mom is Sarah, dad is David. Spins it with some movement. Twice she's missed away with the screwball. Ebbs with that wide open stance. Look at the hands away from the body. Loose, moving in the box as she takes outside. 3-0 the count. And the defense right now playing to all games. She's got power in that swing. She's up on the plate. You can see how balanced she is and how much leverage she has in that body. But she will also go for the slap or a bunt, so you've got to stay on your toes. Change up 3-0. Interesting decision there. Maybe just looking for touch and feel on something. But the screwball, the change up, not there in the first four pitches. Do not. Underestimate nerves in these situations. These are talented 14-year-old softball players that have played a long, long time for comfort there, looking for it. Popped up, that would have helped as Yorkland found the strike zone. That time, Mary Fogg popped it up. Kaylin Hill couldn't get there. Fogg, Mountain View High School in Vancouver, Washington. She's a 22 grad. Don't get too comfortable. You have the scouting report on her. You talked to her, but w when I was asking her to simplify it for my mind, I chop slap, power slap, soft slap, open hand slap, drag bunch. She said, I <laughs> just want to keep the defense on their toes. That's what Fogg was saying when we chatted. And those hitters are tough to defend. You're seeing the bunt shown here. You have to crash at the corners, but then can easily pull it back, slap it by you. She's got a lot of speed and just finds ways to get on base. Therefore, tight, Martinez at third, Ruiz a little closer to the bag. She stabbed at that floater, absolutely she did. Two balls and two strikes to count on Mary Fogg. Both of these teams perfect in their journey to the Platinum Championship. Kayla Rice in the Bullets dugout. Two and two, trying to find the touch for that changeup. That one floats outside to Fogg. Rice, the head coach of this Bullets team. Chris Garcia, the head coach of the Batbusters team. We'll hear from both of these coaches. Three, two, up that time, elevated. Still trying to get comfortable is Bjorklund. And at Green Lutheran High School. He's saying, okay, where would I like to play someday? How about Washington or Duke? I think about those spots. Baylor, even Stanford. Good student in the classroom. Slow roller, third base side. On across, Martinez was playing exactly where she should. And on a high bouncing slap, Ebbs moves into scoring position with one out at second. And this is the only chance to get this out is to cut across the diamond and take away that second hop. Good momentum through, nice throw across the field.
Left-handed hitter Delaney Keat. South Salem High School in Salem, Oregon. As that screwball dips outside. The 22 grad. Mom is Nikki, dad is Rusty. She's the oldest. Younger brother Nathan and younger sister Maya, who is just six. Caught her aggressive there, good pitch. Drop ball, one and one the count. Now this is the type of hitter you want to be careful with. You want to go right at her, you do have first base open. But Keith has a lot of power in that stick. And she likes to swing the bat off the glove, fair ball. They'll send the runner on around, the bullet strike first. As it trickles loose, looking for an extra bag, it is taken. And Keith excited, standing on second base. Looking to elevate the softball, unable to do it that time, but the high bouncing ball snuck over the head of Ruiz. It really looked like Ruiz was, Ruiz was gonna have a play on this, but just isn't able to get the entire glove on it. Actually bounces it up and over and takes some speed away from it. So run easily scores. That's Ebbs who crosses the plate. Starts her off with a changeup. This is Abigail Janke. Lake City High School. Got the corner again. Back to back changeups. No balls and two strikes to count. For Abby, who chokes up just about a, a half grip on that bat. And may even do so more with two strikes. Soft, soft, then hard away. Good sequence on this beautiful day by Bjorklund. 80s all week long, last week a little hotter. Into the mid to high 90s, it's a very Irvine kind of day today. Nice job by Hill behind the plate. Now we've really had beautiful weather and we tend here in Southern California to get cranky if it's above 85 or below 60, so. <laughs> Bouncing ball. Runner, defender, get together, and because of that, that's an out. So an obstruction call there. And so you can erase Keith from the base pads, credit Mooney with the put out there. Jan K will reach on the fielder's choice. And this is tough as a runner also. You want to either get through that play, which is would have been the easier option to do, instead gets caught up in between and interferes or obstructs with the shortstop for that out. Cami Dacus jumps ahead, 1-0 and the count. When you live in the Northwest, you have unique options to be active. And she has been active in some great sports as Cami takes high and away. Snowboarding, not a big surprise. Easy to find a great place to snowboard in the Northwest part of the United States. Actually, Chileas, Washington is her home. WF West High School, but also Rodeo. That's the separator for me with some of her teammates, I'm sure. Rolled that one to the right side. Dacus, a dangerous power hitter, but they got her on the ground that time. Pretty good bounce back there by Bjorklund. After that ball found right field, she came back and quieted things down. Bullets lead it in the 14U title game. The Premier Girls fast pitch, 14U Platinum National Championship game, top of the second inning. Orange County-based Batbusters program such a unique program with so much history as these bullets gather around the circle to deal with them out of Portland, Oregon. But the Bat Busters founded in the late 70s, 1979. And you're looking at a team that has won, you know, more than 30 national championships at every age group. National championships at three divisions of the PGF here. 
Just a rich traditional program history and expectations. Hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of college scholarships through the years. And, you know, there was even a brief time where, where you as a younger athlete wore their uniform as well. There's just a respect that goes along with that Bat Busters name. Oh, absolutely. And athletes travel to be a part of that kind of culture as well. Mia Mendoza was beat in that time. High fly right side. So here's what you see, though, even with Mendoza. These hitters from, from this team, from this Bat Busters team, there's an approach, and it's fearless of letting it travel deeper in the stance. And they're doing a good job of it. There's just a lot of spin on Butterfield's curveball, her rise ball, so now it's just squaring up, keeping the head down just a little bit longer. This is Lana Mooney, and Mooney again takes a pitch that that's a solid take as it started in her half. Mooney Gorman Charter School. Feet aligned in that box in the center of the batter's box as she takes up and away, 2-0 and oh the count. From Dana Butterfield. In. That screwball tied her up. Dana would love to be a nurse someday. So that's her intention at this point. Play in highest level college that will have her and study nursing at the same time. Again, the same approach, nets a base hit. You leak out, those hands don't stay back on that pitch. It's a lazy ground ball. Yeah, and then just keeping the hands inside and driving it back up the middle. You could see the spin as she inside outs that ball. Nice approach, good execution. Sophia Ruiz with the runner out in front of her, the first baseman. No interest there as that one sails high to Ruiz. Kind of taking the athletic flag and heading out for the first time. We'll have a conversation. Mo Spieth, along with Kayla Rice on that staff, Tony Campos and Mariah Helton, the Bullet staff. This Northwest Bullet softball program. Passionate coaching staff, and we, we had a chance to be around them as well this week. And, and like a lot of these great programs, it's about developing the softball athletes so they can find their way to, to, to play in college, maybe help defer some finances with a scholarship. But they'll all tell you, to a woman, to a man, they're about developing young women as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's first and foremost, just developing young ladies to be, you know, strong, confident, and I think these coaches do a phenomenal job of that. And softball is just the icing on the cake. It can be a strong road as part of that journey. And these athletes, whether it be their commitment to their program, the finances they may be fortunate enough to help their parents out with with regard to their education. But let's simplify it. That's a lot of big talk. They just love playing. I mean, we've seen it. That's a lot of big talk I just gave you, and that was a very corporate, pretty piece of hitting to the right side. Committed to not overswinging. Haley Paul there, one step to her left, the second baseman, on a ground ball out. Had good fundamentals on this ground ball. Nice job picking it and just continuing through with the flip over to first base. Jaden Stern now out of Pacifica High School. I feel like that's all I should say. You can tell me more about Jaden Stern. <laughs> you are aware I, of her. I'm just so I'm so proud of Jaden and her and her accomplishments. I went to high school with her parents. I mean, we just kind of go back. She used to pitch with me and And how about that approach? Stern into center field. We may have a play at the plate. On a hop. Safe at the plate. Stern with an RBI. Another gorgeous approach by the Batbusters with a bat in their hands. Jaden Stern. 
And Jaden being early and aggressive, again, right back up the middle. Nice job just punching it through to center field. A good job of sliding into home. Again, you take risks on plays like this, and that is a nice throw home, just a half step too late. Inside corner, strike one, Desiree Martinez, California High School. And I'm sure, by the way, for Jaden, Christine and Brett were very proud of that approach. Those are your old schoolmates. And that one misses up and away, one and one to count. That's a neat moment right there for that young lady. Yeah, she's young. She was one of the later adds to this team, but just blended right in. And she's just, she's quiet, but she gets the job done. In on the hands, popped up right side. Did all she could, Desiree, to wait on it. And in the end, a pop up to the first baseman. Lana Mooney with an RBI opportunity presented, and Jaden Stern took advantage. But it was the slide of Mooney that earned Jaden the RBI. Look at that. Beautiful softball at the 14U Platinum National Title Game. Seeing great things out of the gates in this 1-1 game. A bounce right back by the Batbusters, both of these teams. With solid approaches, these pitchers dotting the strike zone as well. We're in for a good one as we move along to the bottom half of the second inning. Olympic gold medalist Amanda Freed. My name is Darren Sutton along with our production crew, Premier Girls Fast Pitch production crew, and all the folks with PGF that provide us with this great information. We're glad to be here. And these athletes, here's Haley Paul. Mountain View High School. A change up, the start me off pitch to me as a hitter, if that's what I see first, I don't know where I go from there. <laughs> that's tough when you when you get it in there for a strike. Because you're trying to get your timing down and you assume something hard's gonna come in. And then you back to back it. One ball, one strike, the count. Mom is Crystal, dad is Jesse. And the count is two and one. Haley's got an older sister, 18 years old. Her name is Taylor. And Haley also has a, a good start in the classroom in the high school journey, a 4-0 GPA, bouncing ball off the end of the bat. Bobbled if only for a moment, but a nice recovery by Anna Bjorklund. Those sunglasses, always appropriate. The pitcher's mask, a lighter mask, and number nine on the back of her jersey. She's done some coaching already, rec ball coaching. And anytime you play as much as you play like Bjorklund does, there will be the youngers, the six, seven, eight year olds, and she's been able to teach some pitching along the way. Ava Sin, 2-0 the count. Ava West Lynn High School, Oregon-based, 22 grad. Ingrid and Sidara, mom and dad. Nothing straight curveball there with some rise to it. 3-0 the count. Yorkland tries to find home plate. She does there, just eases that one in. Maybe last year, able to be a part of the same squad, a PGF national journey. The 12U division, her final year there, playing in the premier level. Three and two, the count. But you know what? That's a 3-1 swing, folks. Hey. She doesn't want to put you on base, so you got to think it's coming anywhere in the zone and hope it's not that changeup. 
She did not waste that 3-1 swing, but she takes just off the plate. Pretty good pitch on three and two. But Sin that time patiently earns herself a walk. Now this does not look like it misses by much, especially in a full count. It could have gone either way. <laughs> Risky pitch to take, but it pays off. If you're Piper Love in your hometown as she digs in, pops that bun up, you're seeing a lot of good diamond sports. Because when you live in Corvallis, you're seeing Oregon State softball and all the visitors and Oregon State baseball. And the passion that she has at Crescent Valley High School obviously is, is fostered by programs like that. With this Corvallis, Oregon native. Drops down a pretty bunt just outside of the batter's box. And so the play here for the Bullets is to get that runner in scoring position. Either way, the catcher love with a solid bunt. I love to see athletes sacrifice their at-bats to move the runners over. Stands in there, look how she watches it until it hits the barrel, it goes down into the ground, she sees it's fair and then takes off running. Not looking to get herself on base, just move her teammate over, which she does. And so the responsibility, Sherwood High School's Mackenzie Abilly out of Sherwood, Oregon. Looks like a change. Already an opportunity for Georgia Corey to hit. Abilly steps aside this time. Corey Jesuit High School. In Portland, Oregon, and pushing the right button. We're gonna have another play at the plate. A beautiful throw out at the plate. Hannah Core with the rocket from center field. Kaylin Hill applies a tag. Wow. And just a bullet throw home, tag applied, run cut down. The tie remains, and the score remains tied. We having fun yet? Our score is 1-1, but we have had drama at home plate. Not the bad kind, the good kind. Solid defense, great slides, beautiful throws, good teamwork. And a pinch hit single up the middle. Looks like it could have been RBI potential, but instead a bullet thrown home right on the money. A stand-up tag applied, no chance for that run scored. I mean, this we've seen so many well-executed plays at this age level, and we talked about how competitive they are, how talented this age group is. But you get sometimes one opportunity, if that, in a game to come up with a play like that and make it count, and I'm impressed. Whether it be that or the, the slide at home plate by Mooney. Slap the other way. Defense is on the spot. That's Ava Sin in left field in foul territory, albeit first step, good step, gets Marissa Rubio. Shaded to the line, that ball cuts away, but Sin right there. Esperanza High School's Hannah Kaur, she singled back in the first inning. First team All-League player already as she has made her presence felt in high school. Right in on her knuckles and nothing she could do about that. Haley Paul to Delaney Keith on a 4-3 ground out. Strike throw and aggressive swinging. Two pitches, two outs. So Core, who had that amazing throw to Hill, who hits behind her in the lineup. Here is Kaylin Hill. Hill just was able to unwrap that beautiful Christmas gift for a catcher with a throw like that. So much goes into a play at the plate. You can't even imagine for those that even play softball and don't play the position. But those bonuses, a strike, standing up, easy tag, that's a dream come true for a catcher. Oh, definitely. It's usually, where's the runner? Where are my feet? How many hops am I going to hold on? Not that time. Yeah. 
So picture two hops on this one and the runner bearing down on you. Picture it differently. Well, look at the aggressive approach through the ball in the outfield. <laughs> Core comes through. She is confident coming through, and she just pitches it like a baseball strike. And that is a straight backhanded slap tag as well. Just beautiful. Then she started tagging her teammates when she <laughs> ran up to see him. She was fired up. This honor roll student has done some great service work already, volunteering for the for Special Olympic athletes. And when you ask her now, where would you like to play someday? She says, ASU, send me to Tempe. That's where I'd like to play someday if they'll have me. Love asking those questions at, the, at this age because why not dream wherever you'd like to dream? Oh, definitely. And then it's fun to see in the years down the road how that might change and evolve sure. and what comes their way and sparks their interest. Well, you never know, right? I mean, we all go through it as parents or athletes, friends that are competitive in sports. Is it mom and dad might have gone there? Is it... You know, looking for a change of scenery. I idolize a player that plays for that program. You just never know. Or they have a major that I've started to get excited about. It's fun. And there are, and we'll share if we can, most all of them as they told us and we chatted with them throughout this week. And we'll share the answer to those questions because it's no doubt that when you talk to all of them, they hope and plan on playing at the next level. Kaylin's at Marietta Mesa High School. And she's on. Things going smoothly with a couple of pitches. Rubio and then Core for two quick outs and then a, a walk that time. And we may be getting some fresh wheels out there. I think that's what's going on. Courtesy runner for the catcher. Izzy Alamillo. Izzy runs it first. Brianna, her given name. Izzy, the name she likes. She too, as she runs it first, would love to play for ASU someday. Bouncing ball. High hop on a backhand. Nice throw across the diamond. Abilly went to play it, two steps on a backhand. It took a last second hop. She played it night to 14U Platinum Championship. On a beautiful Southern California day, the Premier Girls fast pitch 14U Platinum Division National Championship. The true indicator of where your program stands in its current journey. This is a true national championship as Taylor Ebbs leads things off. The very athletic family, Taylor Ebbs. Trisha and Jason, mom and dad, as she takes a pitch that dives away. Ebbs walked and scored in the first inning. Mom played softball at Portland State. Dad, baseball at Pacific University. She's got a brother, Cole, that's a baseball player, played college baseball. And then a couple of All-American level wrestlers, her older brother. So. It's a family that is very active. Active with that bat, beautiful piece of hitting. Taylor Ebbs is on for the second time in this game for the Northwest Bullets. The Portland, Oregon-based team that scored their first run in the first inning. Just chops us into a perfect spot. It almost looked like Mooney had a chance at it gets by her and Stern stops it before it hits the outfield. It would have been a difficult play either way. Anticipating bunt for Mary Fogg. Pulls that bat back, takes high, one and oh the count. Bottom half of inning number three in the black uniforms with the white piping in the button up style since they're very much the same. The team out of Southern California, the Bat Busters, the OC Bat Busters, their head coach Chris Garcia. The Bullets, Kayla Rice is the head coach. Portland, Oregon based team, but players from Washington and Oregon as well. Bullets going a perfect to 6 and 0. Oh. Batbusters doing the same. Well, it's a wild wild 11-9 win over Universal though to find their way here. I'm going to ask for a bit of description from Kayla Rice on how that went down. Ooh. 
Paul takes a strike over the outside corner. One and one the count. Took a stab at that one. It trickles foul up the third baseline, so Mary will head back and do it again. And now with two strikes, the same situation on, just not a bunt attempt. Well, we shouldn't see a bunt attempt. We probably won't. But something small, definitely, just to move the runner over. Mayor goes fast pitch enjoying Irvine, California, Southern California, Huntington Beach and Fountain Valley, and here in Irvine as well at the multiple locations. Funneling into this, these championship days, 2-2, up the ladder, getting the lead runner. That's a nice play by Desiree Martinez. Look, you have to be positioned in the right spot, but you've still got to make the play, and she threw a strike to Jaden Stern covering. And you have to know your play ahead of time, and you have to read the pace of the ball and know that you need to get an out, and this is just a good job of going right through. Jaden Stern is there to receive. No secondary play, so holds it, but great job of getting the lead runner. So Fogg is on with fielder's choice. Delaney Keith takes outside, 1-0 and oh the count. Can play anywhere on the infield, Keith. There's danger in that bat should you make a mistake. Explosive. Not interested in that changeup as it flutters high. Ebbs reached on a single. Is erased on a fielder's choice. Mary Fogg in this 1-1 game. And oh, the count. Head up under the arms there in tight. Yorkland feeling for it a little bit again. She walked around her in the first. Another free pass in the second. I don't want to break that habit as a pitcher of a free pass per inning. Let's see if she can dig out of this hole. She's had a walk in each and every inning. I think the key for her really is to dial in that changeup and throw it for a strike. It's her best pitch, and that's a pitch that she is used to throwing in any count. She can throw it for a strike when she needs it. It's been sailing a little bit high, and so when you don't have your go-to to rely on, then you tend to fall behind at the count. And it looks like a decision has been made as she was trying to find that strike zone. Into the dugout it goes, and Leanne Miranda gets the call, Westminster High School. And so Miranda with the opportunity to step in for Bjorklund. Obviously, we may see Bjorklund again. We'll see. What do we know about Leanne? Well, she'll bring pretty much the same or similar look. She throws in those high 50s, and she's got a really nice curveball. She's known for being able to work ahead in the count and stay ahead, so it's a great time to bring in a pitcher like that who's just going to hammer that strike zone and get outs. And for now, Bjorklund relegated to pulling for her teammate again. We'll see if there's a spot where she suits the situation. That outstanding changeup. Leanne, six siblings. A lot of support out there in these seats in the sunshine of Irvine, California. Older brother Nathan and siblings Emily and Cheona, Naomi, and Benjamin. A one-year-old little brother. So simply put, not a ton of attention being paid to her right now. <laughs> Guess what? We're all watching you right now. So go get him, Leanne. She fires that one tight. Boy, good way to start things. Wicked screwball right in on the hands. Yikes. Yeah. 
Abigail Janke reached on a fielder's choice back in the first inning. Starts with that bat rested on her shoulder, parallel to the ground, and takes inside one and one the count. High school newcomer of the year in her league. Would love to play at Louisville someday. She takes on the black. Right in the corner, one and two the count. Change up, rolled right side. Bobbled if only for a moment, but that's long enough. That went off the end of the bat too much for Stern, so Stern, who will look for another chance, couldn't make the play on that one, and just a little bit more pressure now on Leanne Miranda to make her pitch. We've already seen the leadership of Kaylin Hill, the catcher. She pulled the group together on the mound and said, let's hit the reset button, make a play or two, and get back in the dugout. Fogg, Keith, and Janke on the bases. Infield drawn in now. All the way around, not just on the corners. Tight. For Cam Dacus. One ball and one strike to count. Mom is Joy. We had a chance to meet her before the game today. Dad is Kanan. She's got an older brother, Austin, 21 years old. Pops played some college baseball. Yakima Community College. Two and one the count. So here's the thing with Cam. Careful. Because there's power if you make a mistake. Seen some big home runs in semifinal games. On the ground, into center field, she uses her strength for an RBI single. Aspires to be a Husker someday in Nebraska. What a huge RBI in this championship game for Dacus. Not trying to do too much. Hey, you talk about the power. We see the power written in the scouting report, so you think she's going to go big, but then just buckles down and makes solid contact. Look at the balance in her leg. The head stays down and just punches it up the middle. This is all she needs to do. This is such an effective approach at the plate. And you know now if you're Coach Kayla Rice that you go one, you go one base at a time when that ball goes out to center field to core because she's twice now <laughs> showed that gun home. Change up skips in there. Miranda trying to find the strike zone against Haley Paul. Paul unable to square one up back in the second inning. Gives way in this situation. High pop up to the right side. Safe at the plate and another run is driven in. That one's thrown away, no one out there. And all of a sudden a miscue is oh so costly. The base is empty on what should have been just a sack fly. Sophie Hans, who was pinch hitting with the fly ball to right, did her job, and then she had some help from the other dugout. And this almost looks like there's gonna be a really good play at the plate. Nice job coming through it. The ball goes home, a couple of extra hops, but then it's that secondary throw. And look, it looks like the runner would be out if that was a play that was executed. The tag could have been made, but instead goes into center field. And nobody's out there. And that opened up the floodgates. Frustrating, certainly, in a championship game for a game that has been so tightly defensed. And you hate to see it, but now the Batbusters, who have shown a great approach in using the entire ballpark, have to go to work big time. 
Ava Sin walked in the second. And give Paul, who gave way to Sophie Hans. Hans with that RBI and that pinch hit opportunity. Outside, screwball wouldn't get there. So the team from Portland, Oregon, with a smile on their faces now. Okay, Piper Love, this is your chance now. Mom is Corey, dad is Will. Older brother Brock, who is 17. And she takes low, 1-0 and oh, the count. <laughs> Lifted, left field. Ranging toward the line. That one put away, but a big inning for the team out of the great state of Oregon. The Northwest Bullets have come to play. They've been aggressive on the base pads. Now they're having fun in the 14U PGF National Title Game. Amanda Freed, Olympian, Darren Sutton, glad to have you back. And we're having a quick conversation with Kayla Rice. Kayla, thanks for doing this. Today's been crazy already, but I'd like to ask you about your semifinal game against Universal, <laughs> that 11 to nine survival. Congratulations on being here. Thank what, you very what, much. what was yesterday like? Uh, yesterday was a whirlwind. I mean, they came out and they scored four runs in the first. We made a couple errors, came back with a two run home run to cut the lead in half. Made a couple more errors. They came up nine to two, but then my team just scrapped and they fought, and we ended up winning eleven to nine. Wow, that's been their thing all season long. They fought. We went to Jersey to qualify, fought. Went to Portland to qualify, fought. I mean, this team has heart. Okay, speaking of heart and leadership, tell us a little bit more about Dana Butterfield. We've seen a few innings. We've read all your notes and her notes, but you give us the perspective on dealing with her as a pitcher. This is the best week that she has absolutely thrown. She's actually battling with a little bit of a hamstring injury as well, and she's just pushing through it because we want to go home with a national championship. We want to represent the Northwest. Kayla, thank you. Thank you. Kayla Rice and her team wanted to bring a championship home. Right out of the gates, look, that's the right approach for Mia Mendoza, and we've seen that be a successful one. Butterfield just out now throwing strikes. That's the key, has to come out and fire strikes. And Mendoza flies out to right field. One and oh, the count. Lana Mooney singled and scored on the RBI by Jaden Stern back in the second inning. And we've seen the most effective at bats in this game be the balls put in play on the ground. So that's difficult when you're facing a pitcher who throws a lot of curveballs, screwballs, rise balls to get on top and drive it down hard. Two and one the count. So it's a perfect example. Take a look at this pitch. This curveball on the outside part of the plate just swinging right underneath. And even if you make contact with that, that tight spin forces miss hits. Two balls and two strikes to count. And this young athlete who has started her journey through high school with a 4.25 GPA. Proud of her fast hands. Like that. You can make decisions later if you're confident in your hands. You know what she'd like to do with those hands? Someday. To be a surgeon. Already makes it clear. I'd like to be a surgeon someday. Now that's ultimate confidence in your hands. Those fast hands go to work on a pitch in, but right there she was tied up to third baseman Janke for the second out of the inning on across to Delaney Keith. Look at the aggressive short hop pick here. 
by Janky. Picks it up. No big deal, and across the diamond, a hard throw. Right at the knees to Sofia Ruiz. One of the first athletes to come through the journey in her family. Not a family of athletes. She's proud of what she has done. So are her parents, Diana and Alfonso. That time, she just ended a quick half inning. Five to one the score, the team from the Northwest. Fourteen U Platinum Division National Championship game. Amanda Freed, Darren Sutton, and down in that first base dugout, the head coach of this fine Batbuster squad, Chris Garcia. Chris, in your journey in these six games here, what are you most proud of? I know you guys will, will hope to dig out of a hole today, but when I look at these scores, it's been a lot of successful domination these first six. Why? Why, Chris? Uh, well, our bats just came alive. You know, we've um, we were struggling a little bit coming into the tournament, and all of a sudden, you know. We just got hot and started hitting the ball well. So I'm, I'm proud of them with just sticking with what we do and, and putting the ball in play. Amanda sits to my right. She's a she's a Bat Buster alum. When you wear that logo on your hat or on your jersey, what does that stand for? If I'm one of your athletes, what are the expectations? Our expectations are, are to compete and to win. You know, there's, there's a lot of history with the Bat Busters, and we're proud to be a Bat Buster. And, um, you know, just, just coming out and competing and winning. All right, rally cap time for you, Chris. Best of luck the rest of the way. All right, thank you. Chris Garcia, the head coach of the Bat Busters program. We appreciate these coaches when they do this and take the time. Mackenzie Abilie will lead things off. The Bullets just looking to add on now. Make them make a play defensively. And it's made. Leanne Miranda wasn't able with the way she set her feet to put a lot on the throw, therefore very close. I was thinking the same thing. Got to the ball pretty quickly, but scooped it with the glove. As you watch here, this is a nice bunt. The glove has to come up to the hand and then just not able to get a lot on it, but the catch made quick, and that is a close play. Taylor Ebbs watches that screwball disappear outside. The active travel ball player out of Kaiser, Oregon. Would love to play for the Ducks someday. Fly ball left center field toward the gap well struck. And deep over and up against that wall. Core couldn't get there. Ebbs is hustling on around in the third with the triple. D Money having a day. A walk, a single, and now a triple. A nice early swing, and this ball is lifted. And the outfielders are playing middle shallow depth, so Core has to run a long way, and she goes for it. She is so close to this, just out of reach. So I don't blame her for going into that dive on that. She gets up quickly, gets that ball in. Mary Fogg with an RBI opportunity now. And she takes low, 1-0 the count. Handles the bat so well. She's got a pretty good mentor in that area. If you remember, Chelsea Suitos played so well at Oregon, now part of the Filipino national team. Well, that's, that's her slapping coach. Four-year starter for Mike Candrea, who, well, we saw him a lot this week. Out seeing these young, talented players, a head coach. One of the most successful college coaches of all time down in Tucson. To the backstop, that will play to run. Six to one the score. The dugout is all full of energy. And loved our conversation with Kayla Rice. What a great representation for these young athletes in the program, the passion, the smart answers, the coach, it sounds like she's so in tune with her athletes. And it's their day so far. Fog is on. There she is.
Delaney Keith. Takes outside, 1-0 and oh the count. Mom is Nikki, dad is Rusty. Your dad played college football and college baseball at the Division I level. And dad Rusty had some time in the Oakland Athletics, Oakland A's organization, so this is a fun baton she is taking on a diamond sport with dad playing professional baseball. Two and one the count. It's fun to go up there to the plate, knowing you don't really have any pressure. Your team's scoring runs. Just go up there, have a little fun. She went around that time, but as that one trickles away, scoring position, Fogg moves up in this five-run lead here in the bottom half of inning number four. Those at-bats are fun, aren't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's fun anytime you get to step into the box, but it's more fun when your team's on fire, everyone's doing their job. And doing that, high fly ball center field well struck off the glove of Core. They'll stop the runner at third, running right through the stop sign, and easy out. So there was a stop sign, to be fair, the entire time from Kayla Rice, but Fogg head down just kept going, and let's hope she's all right. Got a good firm tag as she went by. By Kaylin Hill. And switches the fee and Core has a good beat on that ball. She has it, but it's in and out of her glove and she's got that strong arm, short hop. The throws have been fed high to Kaylin Hill and she's going high with the tags. Look at that effort just off the heel of a glove but up and recovers nicely. And again, that arm. Yeah, that certainly wasn't the intent. Just once she had it cleanly and that catches meant went at her. And as the slide and the tag came together, she just got to pop upside the jaw. Guess there's no other way to put it. And if for a moment that doesn't feel right, that makes sense. So Keith is at second, and that was the kind of a bat you want to have, by the way. Back shoulder, drive the softball. Shallow right center field, third out of the inning, into the glove of Core. Another run at it. PGF 14U Platinum Division, national championship game. On a beautiful Orange County, California day, Olympic gold medalist Amanda Freed. My name is Darren Sutton with our entire Premier Girls Fast Pitch production crew. A six to one lead out of Portland, Oregon. Finding some shade where you can. But if you happen to be in the sunshine, not so bad. Not so bad at all. Jaden Stern, who had a big RBI single back in the second inning, the lone run batted in for this Batbusters team. Again, trying to use the bigger part of this diamond. That time, one step to her left, Abilie is there, ranges and makes the play for the out. Mary Fogg received that high tag but she slid in at home plate, and in right field, Maddie Doig has come on for Mary Fogg, number four in that black jersey. So we hope that Mary's okay. Ice pack down in that dugout to keep an eye on her. But it's one of those things, Amanda, you and I were talking about it. 
where you get to that age when you're elite. One hopper, right back to the circle. Great grab, nice job, Desiree Martinez. Butterfield got her. It's that combination of that play at the plate as you're evolving as a catcher, it's just getting your skills down, your technique. Not questioning the intent, we're not down there, but it's one of those where as you get older, 14, 15, 16, then 17, you just get more comfortable even if it's a bang bang play, applying the tag lower. Yeah, yeah, receiving the, the throw a little bit lower, going in front of the bag, not up the line. You know, little things like that. Like you said, you evolve as a catcher. You you know, you understand your whereabouts a little bit more, and and you know. But again, intent. Who knows? But nobody's. We've got a game that is obviously, there's a lot of emotions running through it also. So everyone's just trying to make plays and do it quickly and get back in the dugout. That was a great shot of Abilie a moment ago at short. She helps her outfielders see what the pitch is as it comes home. It's crazy in these sports how much communication. It goes right by her. And defensively, Sin, who's been watching, fires that one back in. Pretty piece of hitting there. Hannah Kaur, we've seen that big arm for Kaur in center field. She singled in the first, rounded out, back in the third. As that one sails up and away. It looks actually like Maddie Doig is in left and Sin has moved to right field. Even more important for Doig to dial in on her shortstop, pulling her into this game. Bouncing ball, playing it back, but hanging with it is Haley Paul. Counting down outs now, aren't they, folks? They lead it 6-1, to one, the Northwest Bullets in the 14U Platinum Division National Championship. Six to one the score, bottom half of inning number five. The Northwest Bullets out of Portland, Oregon area with players from Oregon and Washington. That survival game they had yesterday, 11-9 against Universal. They have gone through this Premier Girls Fast Pitch Championship with a 5-0 win over Top Gun Academy, an 8-0 win over Ohana Tigers, 7-5 win over the Aces Express, 2-0 over Selena Storm, 6-3 the DeMarini A's and that crazy win over Universal yesterday. One more win is what they're seeking. And right back to work is Leanne Miranda. Batbusters working defensively now, trying to hurry their team back in the dugout and get some offensive momentum. Cammy Dacus. It looked good, but then it wasn't, one and two. Yeah. Rise balls are my favorite, too. I feel you, Cam. Two balls and two strikes to count as she lays off that screwball that sails away. Miranda with a 3.86 GPA in the classroom. Goes to work, high pop up right side. I just found green grass. And because of that, Dacus has ended up with a nice day. She's got a single RBI run scored and, and now a two for three championship afternoon. <laughs> and this really, it just did find grass. When you're known as a power hitter, you open up a lot of gaps in the defense and this just falls shy of Mendoza out there in right field. And a courtesy runner out there for the Bullets. 
Casey Lyman trots out. Earns some field time. Casey at Jesuit High School in Portland. Would love to have played Washington someday. That one is up and away to Haley Paul. Right into her knees. You want to talk about unique experiences. Two years ago, a team from the Northwest that took a journey to the Little League World Series. It was that runner out there at first, Casey Lyman, who played on that Little League team. So softball and baseball, she is already, Casey, had some great experiences. Casey Lyman running. Dad played college baseball at Harvard. And Case would love to be a doc someday. Pediatrician. And she lives child, leaves childhood behind. When she gets older, she'd like to be a doctor of those that are children. 2-2. Two -two. And we'll do it again. just have been really patient at the plate. I feel like from inning one through now, regardless of the score, they've been swinging at good pitches. The majority of the time, drawing walks, getting on base, putting down the, the sacrifice bunts when necessary. Good situational hitting all around. And so Ava Sin with a couple of runners on. Trying to follow the theme that Amanda's talking about. And we may see a change here. Looks like Anna Bjorklund will get back out to the circle to do some work. She pitched earlier in this contest. So Bjorklund takes the call. And right away we'll get loose, see if she can get a couple of quick outs, get her team back, chip away with a few runs. Her team, the Batbusters, with six outs to play with, plenty. You know, I think the reason you maybe find yourself encouraged to, at any level, first of all, why not when you've come to a game like this, but their approach today, and credit to the job that has been done by Butterfield, but their approach has not been overly aggressive. They just haven't been able to square the last few innings up some softballs, but they've been desiring hitting it all over the ballpark. It's not a panicked approach, so it's key for Bjorklund to get him back in the dugout. And we've seen how easily you get one runner on base, you have a miscue here, a little hard hit here, and all of a sudden you're back in the ball game. Brother Blake, baseball player. Dad, Sidaro, lacrosse player. And she fouls that one off. Oh, and won the count. The ninth year of the Premier Girls Fast Pitch National Championship. The alumni of players, as we see a couple of players there on first and second that have gone on to college and gone on to the NPF is just endless. And basically, if there are elite players over the last decade that we have talked about that have won Women's College World Series titles or gone on to play for the U.S. national team, NPF, they've played here first. This really has become a platform for that and we see college coaches even looking down today. They can't talk to these girls at this age, but they're still looking, they're identifying them, they're excited about the future of these athletes and we see so many of them come through this tournament. Chase up, rise ball. 
to play on this stage. And this is what the college coaches want. They want their athletes to come here, play in pressure situations, play on television, because that's what they're going to be getting at the next level. That's a good rise ball. Starts at the chest, ends at the face mask. No balls and one strike to count. Piper Love. Back out there, two really pretty curveballs out on the outside part of the play. Yorkland excited with her second opportunity to re-enter into this one. Got her. That's just two outs, though. That's just two, Anna. I mean, she's really excited, as I said before. <laughs> she wants to get back in the dugout. You've got to smile, the though, two, right? Two great strikeouts, and this was a good sequence of pitches. Look at the drop on that. Puts the break on. Back in the circle. Let's get one more. <laughs> Abley off the end of the bat. One more is what the Bullets will get. The throw is behind the runner to third, right off the end of the bat. And an RBI. And a 7-1 lead for Mackenzie Abilene. And Abilene jumps on this first pitch. She is a little out front off the end of the bat, but it does the job into left field for the RBI. Sometimes it's those hits that are not perfectly squared up that are the most effective. Taylor off the end of the bat, well struck left field. Squared up, making the play out there, hauling it in, Rubio puts it away. They add one more, leading it by a score of seven to one. 14 U Platinum title game. All right, away we go. The national championship game, the PGF 14U Platinum Division national title game. Four hits on the diamond with the Bat Busters, seven and seven big ones. So an opportunity to put this game away with the run rule, with the eight after five, six after six rule, and call this a championship. Just a moment ago, a visit was made to the mound by Kayla Rice explaining the situation to her team. And it's strike one to Kaylin Hill. Three outs away if you put a zero up on that scoreboard. Couple of quick strikes, that's how you start things. So we had talked about you, you still have quite a bit of game left when you think six outs, but three now, you've got to score a run. Ranging in front of the bag, one out. Marley Manalo is 0 for 2, fly to center field, grounded out to short as that one misses way up and out of there. Marley fly deep to center field back in the first inning, just missed one. One and one the count as that curveball grabs the outside corner. Glove on while she calls pitches inside the dugout. It's a great shot there. Back to the screen it goes. That's a smart coach. <laughs> she played the game. She knows. She's not going to sit there without protection. Walk 
working it over over her shoulder with Mariah Helton as part of that coaching staff. Mo Spieth, Tony Campos as well. Change up, pulled it a bit. Two and two the count. Dana Butterfield. Very special day. And on 2-2. Two -two. Just off the plate, three and two the count. The pride of Glencoe High School, Butterfield. And Coach Kayla Rice said she was battling that hamstring injury, but she's been throwing the best that she's thrown this week. Shallow center, back up second. Mackenzie Abley makes the play for the second out. One out away if they keep this deficit for a championship. Mia Mendoza. Flied out to right a couple of times, popped up, back up short, that'll do it. The pride of Oregon and Washington, these Northwest Bullets win it all. The 2018 Premier Girls Fast Pitch, 14U Platinum National Title. They've made the Northwest proud with their efforts. Dana Butterfield, some kind of special today. Some key hits. Big day for Cam Dacus came through with a couple of big hits. Mackenzie Abilie with a big RBI single. And they're just aggressive base running. Delaney Keith, some nice defensive plays as well. I think the Bullets just capitalized on the opportunities that were given to them, and they played like the national championship team today. And they, they are going to be awarded that 14U premier berth next year, which is, I mean, that is just gold. So congratulations to Butterfield and the entire team and to the Batbusters for this clean run through PGF to this game today. I think it was a great effort on both sides of the field. Batbusters program, as was mentioned, so much to be proud of dominating through this tournament. Chris Garcia and his staff, a program that is proud and a program that has been around winning championships since the late 70s. But today belonged to the great Northwest. Dana Butterfield led the charge. And Kayla Rice, a lifelong softballer and now a great leader with most speed. Tony Campos, Mariah Helton on that staff and just some timely hits when needed. And it's also one thing when you're bonding and in a hotel room with your teammates, something fun about that when you play the team that's the home team that drives to these championships. There's a, an unforgettable experience these athletes will take with them all through high school and into adulthood as well. I think so. These are where the best memories are made in your athletic career. And, and you're right, coming down as, you know, air quote, the underdogs and just wanting to take it out on this home field, I think just says so much for this Bullets team and a new team and an organization that's established and has been very successful with this team came out this week, played well, and they they came home with the championship. And as we talked about some timely hits throughout this contest, Mackenzie Abilie with the big hit, huge hit, driving it a run, key run it turns out, Delaney Keith early with an RBI, Cam Dacus with a two hit effort, and a lot to celebrate for Dana Butterfield in the circle, congratulations to both these programs, but specifically the Northwest Bullets. She's Amanda Freed, our entire PGF production crew. My name is Darren Sutton. On behalf of Premier Girls Fast Pitch, congratulations to the Bullets, the 2018 14U Platinum National Champs.